Hi, this is Paul Battaglia, and this is section 2.3. Students arrive at section 2.3 now knowing what a derivative is and having some understanding of some basic differentiation rules. So naturally, it's time to move from the basic to the more intricate, and that brings us to the product and quotient rule. So the essential question that you'd like students to be able to answer is very simple. How do I use the product and quotient rule for derivatives? This section will naturally lend itself to addressing mathematical practice for AP Calculus number three. And that is the ability for students to select appropriate strategies. So a nice warm-up actually might be able to greet the students with, let's say, this following problem. f of x equals the quantity of 2x plus 4 times the quantity of 3x squared minus 7. Now, that's a product of two functions. But the students don't know the product rule yet. So what you're looking for is, are students making up their own rule? Or do they have the ability to expand that expression and then use some of the basic rules we discussed in section 2.2? Look for those kinds of things right away and caution them about making rules up that they don't really know about yet. So a nice thing to do here as we get into the product rule and the quotient rule is look at examples 1 and 6 specifically because they address efficiency and strategy. Always ask students, is there an easier way? And even in that warm-up, there was an easier way. We didn't have to use a rule that they didn't even know yet. So look for ways to make their lives a little bit simpler. Now, along those same lines, on the AP exam, what's important is that students need to recognize alternate forms of these kinds of answers. So if students are working through a, a question that requires the product or the quotient rule, they may have questions like, how far do I go? Or, you know, how much more work should I do algebraically? And the answer to that question is always the same for me. Have you made meaningful progress in simplifying? Have you gotten yourself to a point where the answer looks maybe neater or cleaner? If not, then maybe you don't want to go that far algebraically. Maybe you just want to go one or two steps into the derivative. So there are lots of common mistakes, as you might imagine, as you go through these rules. Now, students have to practice them. They have to master them. They have to work at them. And sometimes five to seven to ten problems just isn't enough. Because remember, if this is a more intricate rule than what we talked about in section 2.2, that means there might be more intricate rules coming after this section, like the chain rule. So emphasize to students that if we're going to try and avoid some common mistakes, really work hard at mastering these rules. So what do I look for as a teacher? Well, let's think about the product rule first. Students initially think that when you have the product two functions, that the rule is just to take the derivative of one times the derivative of the second one. Clearly, that's not the case. Likewise, with the quotient rule, students tend to think that you have to take the derivative of the top and divide it by the derivative of the bottom. That's an issue. The quotient rule also has its own problems. Since it's such a large expression and the derivative is so involved, students might actually forget to bring the denominator with them in that expression. They might reverse the order of the top when they're deriving. So a neat little funny thing we like to do in my class is we like to remember kind of like a little, I'm not going to call it a song, but a way to help us with the quotient rule. We say low d high minus high d low over low squared. And what does that mean? We multiply the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. That's a mouthful, but it may help them encapsulate that rule a little bit more, kind of make it a little bit easier to understand. Finally, when students start to work through higher order derivatives, second derivatives, third derivatives, they actually forget that after they do their first derivative, they might need to use the product rule again in the second derivative or the quotient rule. Now, a good way to assess this is with our lesson closer. We've asked the students to find the second derivative of the cosecant function. And what that will do is yield the necessity for the product rule in that second step. I hope these tips have been helpful. I'm sure you'll find much success in section 2.3.